Hey friends, Miss Veronica here. I hope you've had a fantastic week. It's time for some Sunday school, and I got my daughter Chris here to help me out this week. So go grab your Sunday school stuff and come on back. All right, you guys, let's get some moving and grooving going on, all right? Let's do a couple of songs. Today, we are going to do Wild About Us and Beautiful One. So stand on up, and let's get singing some praises. ready for some Bible trivia because you can still earn Bible bucks through all of this, okay? I've been keeping track of those of you that have been sending in your answers. So let's get ready for another question. Got those thinking caps on? Are you ready, Miss Chris? 
All right, here is this week's question. Who appeared to tell Mary that she was with child? Hmm, if you need some help with that one, you can look it up in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. All right, so send in those answers. All right, my friends, this is week four of Advent. Do you remember what that word Advent means? Chris, do you know what, remember what that word Advent means? The coming of Christ. The coming of Christ. We're looking forward to Christ coming again. But as we learned in our first week, which was our prophecy candle or the hope candle, we learned about the prophet Isaiah. And he God showed him that he would someday bring a savior to save us all. And that gave us gave the people that were living in that time hope of a savior to come. And today we look forward to the hope of Christ coming back again to save us again, right? And that's what that was that candle meant that first week. That's what we took a look at. Week two, we looked at the Bethlehem candle or the candle of faith. And remember, we talked about Mary having faith going to Bethlehem, being pregnant. And when it came time for her to deliver, she knew that through all of that, God was with her. And that was so awesome to see the faith that Mary had during that time. Because it could be a pretty scary time. All right, week three, which was last week. Do you remember what that one was? It was the pink candle. It was the angel. No. Oh, got- shepherd's candle. We got Chris. Ah, oh, see, she thought she could look at my notes and cheat. But that's okay. We'll let you go. Pink candle. It was the shepherd candle or the candle of joy. All right. And we talked about the shepherds. And who came to talk to the shepherds? The angels, angels, right? (laughs) Yeah, the angels did. And the, uh, the shepherds were filled with joy and they went to find the baby Jesus, right? All right. This week's candle, Chris, is... Angel. The angel candle, all right, or the candle of peace. All right, my friends. So this week, I want to do something a little bit different because we're also, I want to introduce the last candle too, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And I kind of want to wrap up Advent here, but our last candle in our Advent reef would be a white one. And we light that one on Christmas Eve. And that is the Christ candle. Hmm. Imagine that, right? All right, so today, what I have, and this is why Chris is here to help me. Some of you have heard this story before, because this is one of my favorite books at Christmas. It's called, What God Wants for Christmas, all right? And for those of you that have been around for a while, you've heard this one, but it's okay. It's a great time to review. Remember, I have these boxes. I got to try and get them here. I have these little boxes, and they have numbers on them. But I'll tell you what, the box that's right here, that's going to be the very special one. But we're going to start off with our story, all right? So, here we go. What God wants for Christmas is to you a surprise. In box number seven, it is a disguise. But no peeking, be patient. For this you must wait. It's what you offer him, and it's really great. All right, so box number one, what do we have in box number one, Chris? The angel Gabriel. The angel Gabriel. All right. So this story is from Gabriel's point of view. So sit back and listen to what Gabriel tells us. In the beginning, God started to plan to bring about Christmas, and it would be grand. Here he would launch a gift-giving tradition. I'll tell you how it started, so please pay attention. But before we get to the story's heart, let me explain how I played a part. I was involved a long time ago as angels and speakers. It's God's word, I know. For I stand in his presence. I am Gabriel, and God wants you to hear this story I tell. For my words will offer his great gift to you, and you'll know what he wants when the story is through. What God wants for Christmas is to you a surprise. In box number seven, it is a disguise, but no peeking, be patient, for this you must wait. It's what you offer him, and it's really great. All right, so we're going to open up box number two. 
Chris, what do we have in box number two? Oh, we got a, it's kind of stuck. Hold on. Okay. There we go. Box number two. Mary. Mary. The story began when Isaiah did tell that a virgin would give birth to Emmanuel. That name is special. It means God with us. And one day in this, and one day in this child, many would trust. So when the, when the time came, I was appointed to tell the young woman that she was anointed. I said to her, Mary, you're God's chosen one, and you will give birth to God's only son. How can this be? For this isn't typical. Indeed, it is not. We'll call it a miracle. God's Holy Spirit will help you give birth to God in the flesh. He'll live here on earth. God said to name this baby boy Jesus. Mary said, yes, may God do as he pleases. For I am his servant and I will obey. So God can use me in this special way. What God wants for Christmas is to you a surprise. In box number seven, it is a disguise. But no peeking, be patient, for you must wait. It's what you offer him, and it will be great. All right, box number three. Miss Chris, what do we have in box number three? Joseph. Joseph. Sweet Mary knew she'd be Jesus' mother, but moms need some help. She needed another. And Jesus would soon need a here-on-earth dad. God knew all of that. Here's the plan that he had. God had a man, man named Joseph in mind. He'd make a good husband who's loving and kind. So one night, God sent an angel to speak. Instructions to Joseph while he laid asleep. Joseph, take Mary. She'll be a good wife. This marriage is still God's plan for your life. God's spirit has given her a baby within. His name will be Jesus. He'll save you from sin. What God wants for Christmas is to you a surprise. In box number seven, it is a disguise. But no peeking, be patient, for this you must wait. It's what you offer him, and it will be great. All right, box number four. What do we have, Miss Chris? Well, that's the little baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. After a while, there came a decree. Go back where you're from originally. So this couple set out to Bethlehem town. And when they arrived, they looked all around. But the inns were too full, no rooms for two guests. And Mary was tired. She needed to rest. All rooms are taken, the innkeeper said. But then an idea popped into his head. My stable's not much, but there you can stay. I'll give you this manger, a feeding trough with hay. Later on, there in the quiet of night, to Joseph and Mary's excited delight, she gave birth to God's son. It was not a surprise. God said it would happen, and he never lies. God gave the first gift that first Christmas day. She gave the Christ, the babe in the hay. But that is not all. God wants something grand, an offering to him, the point of his plan. What God wants for Christmas, it's to you a surprise. In box number seven, it is a disguise. But no peeking, be patient. For this you must wait. It's what you offer him, and it's really great. All right, Miss Chris, number, uh, number five, box number five. What do we have? We have a shepherd. The shepherd. He's even got a little sheep holding onto a little sheep there. All right. The shepherd. During the night, when all was quite still, shepherds were sh sheep watching out on a hill. A savior is born. Boom, a rushing wind voice. I, he I heard Messiah. It's time to rejoice. Now what stood before them, the angel in white, with eyes full of fire and stature of might. Go to Bethlehem. Now in the stable you will find a babe in a manger. That is your sign. Then finding a stable where they saw a light shining through the wallboards into the night. The shepherds looked in and what did they see? A manger, a baby. They fell to their knees. So this must be him. This is the sign. They had found Jesus, the Savior divine. The shepherds joined in the first celebration of Christmas.
because of this grand revelation. What God wants for Christmas is to you a surprise in box number seven. It is a disguise, but no peeking. And be patient, for this you must wait. It's what you offer him, and it's really great. All right, Miss Chris, we are on box number six. I am holding box number seven because I think Chris is going to try and peek. Do you think? Nah, maybe not, huh? Okay. Next box, Chris, number six. We have a wise man. One of the wise men. All right. Now, way in the east lived some men who were wise. They saw a new star when they looked to the skies. This must be the star written here in our books. It tells of a king. Let's go take a look. So they followed the star till it finally rested, where Mary, the mother, and Jesus were nested. When they stepped inside, they all fell to the floor to worship the king. But then there was more. These men gave him frankincense, myrrh, and fine gold to honor the one the new star had foretold. Then in a dream they learned not to go back. By the way of King Herod, he planned to attack. So they chose to go home a different way, the child's location they did not betray. As Mary thought through these events in her mind, she said, God is so loving, protective, and kind. What God wants for Christmas is to you a surprise. In box number seven, it is disguised, but no peeking, be patient, for this you must wait. It's what you offer him, and it's really great. All right, Miss Chris, tell me what is in box number seven? It's a mirror. It's a mirror. And what do we do with mirrors? You can see yourself, right? So what does God want for Christmas? Us. He wants you and he wants me and he wants Chris. All right. What God wants for Christmas. Now here's the surprise in box number seven where it's been disguised. Peeking in the box for so long you have waited. What God wants is you, the one he created. Me, you ask? Why is this so? I cannot wrap me up and put on a bow. No, you cannot. But what you can give are the choices you make in the life that you live. God wants you to know him and love him within. And this is called worship and offering to him. To do this, trust Jesus who died in your place. When you don't deserve him, this is called grace. God wants you to know him, so choose every day to love God and thank God and give him all the praise. All right, my friends. So that's our story, and I'm going to try and lift this up. So what Chris has been doing with all these wonderful pieces is something that I have almost in every room of our house here at Christmas time. And it's a nativity scene. All right. We have these all over our house. We have them on our trees. Why do you think we have these all over right now? It helps us remind us and take a good look at what Christ has done for us, what God did for us, right? He sent us our the Savior. And I'm going to pick up little baby Jesus here. This is what Christmas is all about. It's about this little guy coming for you and for me. And in return, all he asks is for us to love him and trust him and follow him, just like Mary and Joseph did long ago. All right. So this week, again, Advent is about our angel coming. And we read about angels all the way through the Bible and how they came and visited God's people, and they were these special messengers that God sent. And it is so cool to read about them and to learn more about them. And it's also cool that we get to look forward to Christmas Eve when we celebrate Christ and his birth, but also look forward to him coming again. And so, my friends, I hope you have a great Christmas this coming week. Um, I hope that you are able to take time with your family to celebrate what the Lord has done for each one of us. So my friends, let's go ahead and close in prayer. All right, so let's fold our hands, bow our heads and close our eyes, and let's talk to God. Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for all that you've given us and all that you've done for us. Lord, we ask that you be with each and every one of us this Christmas season and help us to focus more on you to trust you more, to love you more. Lord God, we just...
pray for everybody in our world, those that are sick and that are hurting. We pray for those that are away from their families. We ask that you bring peace and comfort to all. And we just pray, Lord, that you be with us this week and um, watch over us in this time. And we pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, my friends, Merry Christmas. I'll see you later. Bye.